video games have been around for ages, and how do you play said games? The controller. You know, those big pieces of plastic that have buttons, joysticks, and nipples. Nowadays, most people will look at a video game controller and not think anything of it. That's because a good controller is made to be easy to use. If you have to look down at a controller while playing, then you got yourself a controller. I mean, video game controls started off pretty simple. I mean, take a look at the Magnavox Odyssey from 1972. A simple game requires a simple controller. This thing has two dials, one for vertical movement and one for horizontal. Boom, that's all you need. Then there was the Atari 2600. They basically took the general idea of an arcade console's controls and crammed it into this little tiny thing. Sure, it's easy to understand and use. I mean, all it is is a joystick and a red button, but is it comfortable? No. And then for some reason, everyone wanted to put number pads on their controllers. Why? Take the Atari 5200 as an example. You get a joystick and 12 other buttons that you have no idea what you're pressing. Now, let's get back to what I said earlier. If you need to look down at your controller while playing, that's a sh controller. But in 1983, Nintendo came out of nowhere with their own console, the Famicom. They had this cool new plus sign design called the D-Pad, which actually originated from their own Donkey Kong Game & Watch, and then they brought it over to their home console while also patenting it. This was the controller that set the ground rules for a good video game controller. And then Sega just said f*** it and did the same thing. Once the fourth generation of consoles came around, 2D games started to become better than ever. The Sega Genesis controller just added a third button and their control pad is a more normal looking design. And Nintendo's Super Nintendo controller added a whole extra two buttons and had this cool rounded design. Which, I gotta say, is pretty comfortable. Oh, and for some reason Atari still wanted to do a number pad. Then, video games started to enter a whole new dimension, which happened to be the third one. Sony released their own console, the PlayStation, in 1993. And this is basically just a Super Nintendo controller with two grips at the bottom. Not to say that it's not comfortable, in fact it's actually a nice controller in my opinion, but they didn't do anything new, like, why do we have to use a D-pad in 3D games? Now, Nintendo realized that we need a way to move in all 360 degrees in a 3D space, so... They did this. If I didn't know what video games were, I would tell you this is some kind of a sex toy. Why the hell are there three grips? Like, who are they selling this to? Some kind of an alien? I mean, I guess it works, but you just don't have the easy access to the entire controller at once, which is dumb. Starting with the sixth generation, we got the PlayStation 2. It's just a PlayStation 1 controller with analog sticks, moving on. Then Sega came in with their Dreamcast controller. Well, I've never used this controller, it doesn't look too horrible to use, like the analog stick, d-pad, and buttons all look fine, and it even has this cool little screen in it that you can put game data on and bring it around with you like a tiny little Game Boy. In 2001, Nintendo released their GameCube, and oh, oh boy, this controller is something else. I mean, talk to anyone in the Smash Bros community and they'll obviously tell you that this is THE controller to play Smash with. Like, even if you're not playing Smash Bros, this is still a really good controller. Like, just look at how the main face buttons are arranged. The A button is the big main one, because most of the time, that's the main one you're going to be using. Then the B button is smaller, but still in reach. Then X and Y are also easy to reach. And this controller also has analog triggers, which means if you press it down a little bit, then it will do the action a little weaker. Finally, Microsoft comes storming into the video game console scene with the definition of obesity, and I don't like this controller. Like, why are the ABXY buttons shaped like that? Why is the D-pad like that? And why is it so fat? Thankfully, they realized their mistake and they fixed everything up after getting so many complaints. Now, the seventh generation of consoles was pretty normal for Sony and Microsoft, but Nintendo decided to do something completely different. They focused more on the control scheme than power of the console, which I'd say paid off well for them considering it was the best-selling console of the generation. Now, Nintendo used motion controls, meaning that when you flail your arms around enough, you'll eventually get a strike in Wii Sports Bowling. Microsoft pretty much just made a more modern, more comfortable Xbox controller for their Xbox 360. And Sony just did the exact same thing again. Then in 2010, Microsoft decided to hop on the trend of motion controls and made the Kinect. The thing that made this stand out from Nintendo is that there was no controller, or rather, you were the controller. I mean, it was alright at first, but then you just realized... Why? And in 2012, Sony just wanted to straight up copy the Wii and made the PlayStation Move controllers. These were just sticks that you held, and again, you flail your hands around until something happens. Now, entering the current generation of consoles, we're gonna start with the Wii U. I mean, this has gotta be the most unique controller here. I mean, look at this thing, it's got a screen! 
Unfortunately though, the Wii U failed because everyone just thought this was an expensive add-on for the Wii and no one was going to buy into that. Finally, Sony decided to do something a little different with their controller. They added this cool little touchpad, an accelerometer, and a speaker too. These were rarely used anymore. And the Xbox One controller didn't change much based on features, but I gotta say, this is one of my favorite controllers of all time. It's just so comfortable to me, and I don't even have it anymore, so. And finally, we have the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is a really unique console. I mean, look at this thing. You can take the controllers off the system itself, put it in this little grip thing, and boom, normal controller. They also have a load of little features built into it. An accelerometer for motion controls, HD rumble, which helps you get better vibrations from your games, and an IR camera, which was pretty much just used for Nintendo Labo. Oh, and it's missing a D-pad. Now, I obviously understand why they did this. It's an easy way to be able to pass one of the controllers to a friend for multiplayer use. But this was still a big complaint people had when the Switch first launched. I mean, sure, you could buy a Pro Controller which had a D-pad, but not everyone wants to spend $80 on a controller. Then I guess you could say they fixed it with their Switch Lite, but again, I don't know how many people are going to buy a whole new console just for a D-pad. Oh yeah, and Sony released the PS5 controller. What the hell is this?